All right, folks, this is Jason with the Prime Outdoors channel. Today, we're going to be converting our regular Starlink dish to a flat mount system, so that way I can mount the Starlink permanently to my rack. I have ordered a star mount flat mount kit, and there's some modifications that we're gonna have to do in order to convert this style over to the flat mount disc. Now, they do have some instructions on their website, and they do offer this as a service. So if you want to go this route and flat mount your Starlink to the top of your van, you can uh, have them do it by sending in your Starlink dish and then paying the extra service fee to have it done, or you can do it yourself. Now, their instructions are all online. You have to download them, and so I've got my tablet here handy. I've kind of ran through the instructions a little bit. It's mainly just a bunch of pictures with a few little notes here and there. So what I'm going to do in this video is just walk you guys step by step with everything I do to make this work out. And at the end, we'll do some testing to make sure it actually does work flat mounted. So after opening the box and start mount, there are gonna be six screws that you're gonna to have to remove and then that will get you into the flat mount itself. Inside the flat mount, you're gonna find everything you need to be able to do the modification. They've got a little template piece, they've got some tie wraps, a piece of shrink wrap, they even give you a pin, some electrical tape, and the rest of the screws, Allen screws, that you're gonna to need to be able to attach everything. All right, so we've got everything marked out. We use their template to make a little divot mark on the front, and then we just kind of marked around the outside. The instructions are very vague in this section, and they don't really talk about uh, how far in you should be marking it in. They do show the end of a pin on a piece of tape, and from that, I kind of guessed what I thought would be right. After marking mine out, I can tell you that I'm about a half inch in on the sides, and about an inch and a half in on the fronts, which I think looks about what they're showing in the pictures, but again, there's no instructions there. So they recommend using a Dremel tool for the next step, which is going to be actually cutting along these lines. I don't happen to have one, so I'm going to use this rotary grinder. Again, I'm just gonna to have to be very careful not to cut very deep in, because you don't want to actually cut through the top and into the circuit board of the dish. All right, so we've got this Starlink cut apart. Now, it wasn't too bad using the rotor grinder. If I was to do this again, I'd probably figure out some kind of jig to hold the Starlink dish still. Uh, there's not really a great way to clamp it, and it wanted to shift on me a little bit, and that made the process a little bit more tedious to do, but I felt like the rotor grinder actually did a pretty good job, so um, I did like using it that way. But again, I try to find some way to sturdy things up a little bit. <clears throat> Once you do get it cut off, you're going to want to use a screwdriver. I happen to have this one little handy tool I got that's kind of like a little pry. And I kind of went around and pried everything apart, making sure that any spots where maybe the plastic was, I didn't get all the way through the plastic, I popped off. Uh, you don't want to just jerk it off because you do have a couple of cables here that you need to disconnect from the circuit board. It's just like a little push button. If you'll, you'll kind of figure it out, you'll just put your hand on it. The plugs pop right out super easy. All right, so we got the notch uh, cut out for our plug, so that way we can plug the uh, Cat6 cable in that comes with the Starlink, which has you know your little USB looking ends, but it's really just a Cat6 cable uh, with proprietary ends. Uh, we cut that notch and we marked that notch using their template. Now the problem is I didn't pay attention to what side of the board or what side I should be putting on. So when I put the template down, I accidentally put it the wrong way and there's no markings on their template to tell you which way it's supposed to go. So you just need to look, pay more attention, don't be filming like I am, and pay more attention and look at your actual mount and then you can figure out which way uh, or which side the uh, access port needs to be cut. 
Now in my case, it's not a big deal. I just had to cut it twice. Now again, this is where the Dremel might be a little bit more useful. I used this saw, it worked out great, and I ended up with a nice hole, so in the end it all worked out. Oop. All right, folks, so after we got everything cut out, things started moving along pretty easily. We had to take apart the back so that we could access the little cable that was fed through this port here and then came out there. Uh, that wasn't too hard. You just have to kind of pry on this and break. It's basically um, glued on there. So you just have to kind of break that adhesive, get that backing piece to come off. And then uh, you have to use a screwdriver on this end to basically pop that little piece out so you can uh, get that in. Now, basically what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to break a few uh, plastic tabs, they tell you that in the instructions, you break some plastic tabs, it allows things to kind of free up and you can get that cable to pull out through the back. So that's a fairly simple thing and if you follow the, the pictures and the instructions, you'll be able to kind of figure out how that goes. Uh, once you have the cable out, there's going to be a little magnetic piece on there. They want you to take that off and then they also want you to take off the little grommet pieces that held the wire uh, nicely inside this housing. So. Again, all those things are pretty easy and you can follow along in the manual pretty easily on that. Once you have that on, then you just put the uh, wire into the new housing and you'll see they'll show again picture showing how you should tie wrap everything in. Now, I didn't use their tie wraps. I ended up using my own tie wraps. Their tie wraps were a little bit bulky and I was afraid that they would press up against the board underneath. Uh, so I used some smaller tie wraps that I happen to have. But yeah, you just tie wrap everything into place. Now, as you can see, I left just a hair of that port sticking out the bottom. I've got probably uh, maybe an eighth of an inch sticking out the port so that, and that's what they kind of showed in the manual. Once you have everything tie wrapped in, you do have to kind of mess around a little bit working on getting your uh, dish to sit in there right. So I had to spend some time sanding. This actually was probably the longest part of the whole process because I was taking out sanding, you know, taking it out, sanding it down a little bit, putting it back in, fitting it, bring it back out, sanding a little bit, because what you want to make sure is that the dish itself sits either flush or just a hair below the, the ledge of the, the outside edge of your mount, because when you put the plexiglass on and you screw it down, you want to make sure the dish isn't holding the plexiglass up and it can seat down good on the rubber O-ring and seal well. So that took a little bit of time. I didn't want to overdo it to where the dish was basically flopping around in there, but I also wanted to make sure that I did get it even or just a hair below. So that, like I said, probably took the longest of this whole process was just kind of detailing that little piece out. Once you have that done, I just kind of went through, blew everything off as best I can. I uh, Probably a can of air would have been super handy. So what I ended up having, because I didn't have one, is I just have one of these little camera plungers and I went through real well and blew out as much of the plastic dust as I possibly could. And then it was just a matter of taking the plexiglass at that point, or taking the dish, putting it up and plugging it back into the cord. So you're only going to be using one cord because the other cord was for powering the motor that moved the dish around. So you're not gonna be using that anymore. So you're only gonna be plugging in one cord. Just make sure you plug it into the correct spot. Again, the manual does show that in a picture fairly clearly. Then it was just a matter of putting the plexiglass down and going around and putting all the bolts in and making sure they're all seated down good. You should be able to see through the plexiglass and be able to see the O-ring squish. So you wanna make sure that O-ring is squished all the way around uh, so you know you got a good seal. Now on my particular one here, I didn't put my corner bolts in yet because that's where I'm going to mount, how I'm gonna mount it to my rack is I'm gonna run longer bolts down through these corners and I'm gonna have some mounting points uh, made into my custom rack so that this will, should hopefully uh, mount right up there. So at this point, we're, we've done all the modification and now I just need to go get it on the rack. I was in the process of having a custom two-piece rack made from my high top by Aaron Dixon out of Bend, Oregon. I had Aaron add in mounting points for the Starlink mount. You will have to figure out how you're gonna mount your Starlink to your own setup, but this is how I did it and it worked out well. For the cable routing, I cut the cable in half routed it through my solar ports and then reconnected the cable using a waterproof RJ45 connection. 
All right, folks, well, we've been out now for a few days and we've been testing the new Starlink setup. We've got the new rack put on the van and the Starlink is now permanently mounted in its location. And so far, I've been very happy with the way it works. I've been doing some testing between my van and Megan's van. She is here as well. And she still has her Starlink set up in a traditional manner with the motor and everything where it kind of points the Starlink and aims it. The testing I have done has pretty much showed that they are uh, acting the same, running the same. Maybe a slight, uh, I would say that uh, maybe Megan's is beating mine out by a slight margin, but it's very minimal. And that slight margin is well made up for in the mobility that I have now with this one. I'm able to use it while I'm driving. Now, I wouldn't say like why I'm driving, but the nice thing is, is I was doing some driving around these hills and I was needing to download some map data and I could just basically pull into any spot that was open. The Starlink would connect up really quick. I could grab that information real quick and then move on. It didn't seem to necessarily stay connected as I was moving, but I was also passing in and out of trees. So it was really hard to kind of tell whether or not if I was like, say out in the desert where I had open sky and didn't have anything passing over me that whether it'd stay connected or not. But up here in the mountains, I had to basically find little open spots, but it still was very convenient because I didn't have to get anything out. I basically just left it on. And as soon as I drove into an open spot, it would connect. I could look up what I need to look up and then just move on. So that was super convenient. So I definitely feel like for me, it was well worth it. In fact, uh, I'm liking it so much and it seems to be working well enough that Megan is also going to switch hers over to a flat mount. So if it's something you're looking into, I definitely think uh, you'll like it. Uh, like I said, there might be some degradation in service, but the convenience of not having to get things out and set things up every time is well worth it in my opinion. Anyhow, I hope you guys found something useful in this video. If you did, please do give it a like. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those down below and we'll catch you guys again outside.